Is the very essence of our reality changing in ways we don't understand? Could there really be a universal phenomenon occurring all around us, affecting everyone and everything, morphing the very fabric of space and time? Have you ever heard of the Mandela Effect? Like all beginnings, it started with an end. An end to a life. A global phenomenon born in the wake of one man's death. On a warm South African summer evening in 2013, a family stood grieving around a home hospital bed, looking down upon the body of a man who had just breathed his last breath. He had been a great man, a revered man, adored and respected throughout the civilized world. The date was the 5th of December and the body belonged to none other than Nelson Mandela. The next day, as news of his passing was being broadcast around the globe, an entire nation found itself in the depths of mourning. But elsewhere in the world, a palpable feeling of surprise was brewing over these reports. Mandela's death had not been unexpected. He was in his 95th year and had been ill for some time. But the news of his death still came as quite a shock to many people. Because as far as they were concerned, he had already been dead for almost 30 years, apparently having passed away sometime in the mid-1980s, whilst he had been in prison. As the days and weeks passed by, more and more people expressed this same feeling of surprise, not just in their hundreds, but in their thousands. The world suddenly found itself polarised between those who believed Mandela had died in December 2013, as reported, and those who remembered him dying many decades earlier. It wasn't the first time such an inconsistency in the details of a historical event had been noticed, but it was by far the most prominent example to date. Before Mandela's death, there had been no name for this alleged phenomenon, but due to the high profile and widespread nature of this one event, people began referring to any disagreements over how things are remembered and the subsequent feelings of confusion as the Mandela Effect. And so the phenomenon was born. And the truly strange thing is, there has been no shortage of other apparent anomalies in our timelines. Shortly after the phenomenon had made itself known and had been christened in honour of the great man himself, many other examples began to surface. For instance, there are a whole host of people who absolutely believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster did not occur in 1986, but three years earlier, in 1983. That Tank Man, the youngster who stood up to the column of armoured vehicles in Tiananmen Square in 1989, was actually run over and killed by the lead tank, not spirited away by the police as was seen on film, and that Mother Teresa had already been canonised as a saint before her death in 1997, 
as opposed to September 2016. No saint has ever been canonized while still alive, and many people remember, rather vividly, the resulting controversy surrounding this almost sacrilegious breaking of convention. These apparent anomalies are not just limited to major events, they also occur in much more subtle ways. In fact, one of the most famous examples of the Mandela Effect is that of the alleged misspelling of the Berenstain Bears, a much-loved series of children's books which originated in America during the 1960s. Many long-time fans of the series were confused, and some even outraged, to find that the titles of these books had changed from Berenstein to Berenstain, spelled with an A instead of an E, which is not how they remembered or even pronounced the name growing up. However, when they looked into the series' history, they could find no record whatsoever of the books ever being published under the Berenstein name. Understandably, their initial confusion and outrage suddenly turned to shock. Similarly, many other less significant changes have occurred, most notably in the scripts of films. For instance, in Disney's Snow White, millions of people will remember the Evil Queen's famous line mirror mirror on the wall, but in fact it is, and apparently always has been, magic mirror on the wall. What wouldst thou know, my queen? Magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? In Forrest Gump, many would agree that the titular character's quote, my mom always said life is like a box of chocolates, just doesn't sound right as my mum always said life was like a box of chocolates, but apparently, the latter version is how it has always been said. My mum always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And we all know that the original Star Wars trilogy has been edited almost to its detriment over the years, but the line, Luke, I am your father, has been quoted and used on merchandise ever since the release of The Empire Strikes Back. Why then does Darth Vader actually say, no, I am your father? Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. Even in a documentary on the making of Star Wars, the late James Earl Jones quotes the line as Luke, I am your father, during an interview. When I first saw the dialogue that said, Luke, I am your father, I said to myself, he's lying. So why do so many people remember things differently? Why are there such inconsistencies in our memories? What is the Mandela Effect? And why is it happening? If it is even happening at all? As you can imagine, speculation is rife and has ranged from the insipid to the outright bizarre. One of the more unusual explanations requires the use of M-theory. M-theory postulates that there are an infinite number of universes, all stacked close together, much like a loaf of bread, where each slice represents a different reality. The closer one slice or reality is to the next, the more alike those realities are. The proposed theory is that our universe has moved so close to a neighbouring universe that it has created a bridge of sorts whereby people cross over from one reality to the next and are not even aware that they are doing so. In our neighbouring universe, Nelson Mandela may well have died in the 1980s, so people crossing over from that reality would carry with them different memories to the people in this reality, where he died in 2013. This would in turn cause a disagreement between these individuals, giving rise to the Mandela Effect. 
Prominent physicists have stated that, if there is any truth to M-theory, this is most definitely plausible, and there are even well-documented cases throughout history of supposed visitors from other realities, such as the man from Tored. But for the time being, at least, it is something we can neither prove nor disprove. One of the more exotic explanations involves time travel. We have always been told that time travel is impossible, and in a way, that is correct. Nothing we can do in our daily lives would allow us to go journeying through time at will. But in actual fact, time travel is possible and indeed does happen at the subatomic level. But how could travelling through time be responsible if we are not currently capable of doing so in any meaningful way? People have proposed time slips as the answer. Throughout history, many people have reported unwittingly slipping through time, travelling both backwards and forwards. The experience usually only lasts for a few seconds, sometimes minutes, but on rare occasions, people have described experiences where they have been trapped in another time for hours, sometimes days. There are also those who say that secret government projects have actually cracked the puzzle of time travel and that we, as a species, are in fact capable of travelling through time. Whether deliberate or accidental, could time travel be causing these anomalies or branching timelines in our universe at large? It is doubtful. Any changes to events in our past would result in everyone's memories of those events being altered at the same time and no one would be any the wiser. Other theories include the possibility that we are all wired up to a huge supercomputer as per the matrix and that these anomalies are actually glitches brought on by intrinsic updates to its source code. Others purport that experiments at CERN are responsible, though they are never able to clarify in exactly what way. On the other hand, Maybe the explanation lies more in the mundane ways in which our brains work. It has been proven many times over that each time we recall a certain event, our brains embellish upon it in some way, adding or subtracting particular details. We cement and reinforce these details as time moves on, and as the recollection starts to fade, we convince ourselves that a particular thing did or did not happen, even if the opposite is true. So is the Mandela effect nothing more than a side effect of the complex processes involved in the storing and recalling of memories? Again, there is no clear answer. Whilst our memories are certainly fallible, this mostly only applies to things which we have seen, heard or experienced only once. When you have grown up knowing that something exists in a very specific way and have seen it in that very specific way for most of your life, only to find that one day it suddenly and inexplicably changes. Can we really put it down to the fickle and impressionable nature of human memory? Especially when so many other people out there also remember it in the same specific way that you did, and then experience the same confusion and alarm when they realise that something has changed. It's an interesting question. Whatever is responsible for the Mandela Effect, whether it is neighbouring realities, clandestine time travellers, glitches in the source code, or just our brains playing tricks on us, it is no less of a phenomenon, and it looks like it is here to stay. And as always, we should keep our minds open. In the description, we have linked to a website which has catalogued hundreds of these inconsistencies, but be warned, it may freak you out, and we would bet our bottom dollar that you will find at least one inconsistency that your memory does not agree with.